Anyways, getting into today's notes. Uh, where do we want to start? Let's see here. We've got two sections on Windows, actually. Yeah, I don't know if you want to get into the other one yet or not. It's like we got the Microsoft section, and then we have pure speculation, which is the change in market share. What, you mean that's speculative? Well, the, the numbers are real, but, you know, we pretty much we've all agreed that it's going to be another Vista. So, you know, the question is, has Microsoft finally done themselves in? Oh, I see. Because, you know, it, it's basically they lost about 10% share due to the Vista. They haven't gotten it back. And Somebody got title, title of Microsoft Windows losing market share? I should get a lot of attention. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> Let me see here. Right. Oh, operating system. Right. That's operating system, yeah. Let me see. Uh, let's make sure I spell this right. Yeah, that's right. How is this calculated? I'm just. Well, Linux has way more than 1%, sorry. Uh, th that's really funny when you go and look at this. One of these metrics puts Linux at about five percent. The W three one. Well, I mean, what if, what are, what are, what is being counted? Because if if I mean, is this like all computing devices? Because Linux has a huge share. Let's say if you were just to look at the server market share. Uh, well, I mean, th this is you know, this this is limited purely to end user systems, and this is about usage. Uh, so it's like just people, bra uh, uh, the, the two ways you collect this metric are sales, which Linux doesn't get counted at all, right. uh, because the, the rule of thumb when you're counting sales numbers is if the system is dual boot, Windows is the only thing that counts. Gotcha. Um, and the other one is usage share. You know, what platform are people using to access stuff in general? Like that's where the Wikipedia would be one would come from. Based on their servers and the user agents reported back, this was the breakup of people who accessed Wikipedia. Uh, same thing with W3, which has access to a little bit broader metric. You know, it's accessing various servers across the, the on and so forth. That's why theirs counts Linux highest, because okay. they're, they're a more diverse sampling. But sure. the reality is, all of this is guesstimation work. But Honestly, of the metrics that guesstimated that, I think that one's the most accurate of them because it's based on just the day-to-day -day people using computers doing things. Blah percent of them were this. Well, all of them have different numbers. I mean, two of them are fairly close. The Wikipedia one is off. So. Yeah. All right, so what, what is this... Uh, they lost about 10 percent market share. So, what was you're telling me it was 93 percent before? Uh, yeah, uh, not that long ago, and that's based off of both W3 and uh, the market share metric, which is one more people tend to go with. Which is yeah, the first. I don't think that's actually too high to be in the 90s. They they were thought, they were guesstimated about. Oh, oh, this is in the XP days to have about 92%. That to me is way too high. Yeah. Now the guesstimations, for, for those of you who are wondering what we're talking about, you know, we're ta I, I guess we can start the show after we finish going over this. Oh, the, are we not, have you not started the show? I, I, I've been recording. Oh, okay. I, I, so, okay. It's like, for those of you who are wondering what the devil we're talking about, we're, we're talking about the guesstimations of what percentage of systems out there are what. Because the reality is, it's all guesstimations. But for years, the guesstimations for Windows were 90% plus, 90% plus. You know, it was somewhere between 92 and 98% of end user systems were Windows. This is not all computing systems, this is end user desktop systems. Because that's ignoring servers, that's ignoring non desktop devices, so on and so forth. Well, this W3. Uh, 
has um, it is counting. Oh, is that Windows, Windows 2003, the server? Yeah, but apparently people are using that to access things. Like they're using that as a desktop device for some reason. Interesting. Which wouldn't surprise me. Uh, people who are real big fans of the NT uh, line going back, they, they would want to use a 2003 system. That's the yeah. modern equivalent of that. Okay. Huh. But it's really funny. Over the la over basically Vista did this to Microsoft. It, when Vista came out, you know, it's not. And as people have left their XP system, you know, they didn't go to Windows Vista Seven. A lot, not all of them. Some of them have gone to other things. XP is still the largest Windows platform out there. Uh, Where do they go? I mean, Linux. I could, I guess, I can see Linux getting picked up, but I, I, I just don't. Uh... <laughs> I, I, the people that hated Vista went back to XP. That I, I, almost every one of them and the companies that I that I knew. Yeah, it, 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 basically they went three ways. Some went to Linux, some went to OS X, and some went back to XP. Uh, then Windows Seven came out, and some said, "Okay, Seven is enough. That I'll go to Seven. Some said, Seven's the last straw. I'm going to Linux, and some bought Max." You know, it, it, they didn't all go to one place. They kind of are diffusing various other places. Uh, I agree with you. The the ninety eight percent one I never believed because I'm like, an Apple has two That's big. Absurd. Yeah, yeah. And, but there were there were guesstimations that put it up there. Uh, it, I never believe it. Yeah, it, it, I, I I tended to believe the eighty eight to ninety two percent one. Uh, Back again. This is back when XP was at its at its peak. You know, Service Pack two just before Service Pack three. Okay. Uh, I believed that then, uh, but since then, both Linux and OS ten have gained a lot in market share, and this uh, did not help matters any for Windows. It it, it, yeah. it it made a lot of rats desert what they thought was a sinking ship, and look for greener pastures elsewhere. Well, as far as um, you're saying, okay, if they lost market share, why? Um, well, and do we think do we think they can no, stand to lose any more? Do we think it will start to rise? Is MS losing market share? Is your question, I guess. Well, if I look at it from the workplace model, I don't think Windows is going to lose anything. It'll probably just increase. Um, from the consumer side, I do know a lot of. Uh, People that switched to OS X, you know, I actually worked on people, people getting to OS X, um, but I didn't think it would be that much. Um, I, I do know people that own a Mac and a PC. For instance, they bring their work home. The Mac doesn't do it very well, but they like to do other things on the Mac, but they still have the PC box there. It's kind of looked at like, ah, I got to use it because, oh, my boss called or, or I've got to do this thing and then send it up or whatever. And usually the company allows them to log in from, from the Windows computer and not the Mac. Uh, yeah, fact, I, I've, I've come across stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've um, worked with a lady um, that's uh, the management company for our HOA who um, switched to the Mac at home. And uh, I'm trying to get her Mac to, uh, via policy, uh, satisfy all of their security questions and I laugh at it when, when they're talking about security but um, they won't let her, her Mac participate so it's um, one of, it, it's, a, it's it's kind of frustrating because technically I don't see this is not like arguing iOS and however no no um, and, 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 and I know we're she uh, it honest is the technical muster no uh, honestly um, I know where yeah. some of that comes from. A lot of times when a company has a stance that they won't allow a Mac or Linux box to come in, it's because part of their security check, even though they don't tell all the employees this, is they're doing some type of monitoring thing, and their monitoring thing won't work with a Unix system. It, it, it was built for Windows, and it only works with Windows. So they can't properly monitor things. Uh, and and use of time and use of resources and other things because they're using those open hooks that are really security concerns actually that Windows allows for 
that they wouldn't be able to do on a Unix or Linux system without the user giving them specific permissions to do it. And a lot of times it's they're not acknowledging they're doing this to their employees, they're pretending they're not, and they're just using the fact that Windows kind of executes any instructions they throw at it. So yeah. they're doing it behind the scenes, and the, 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 nine times out of ten, that's where that comes from. And it's well, you, yeah, and, and you know, it was funny. I, I, we got her Mac to more than enough pass all the requirements from encryption and everything. And then they just stopped talking to her. It was, it was, uh, they just, you know, just they didn't want to hear it. And it was, it was really uh, strange because I prefer to use my Mac actually for my own uh, W two job if I can. Um, to, to, to uh, log in. I, I prefer my Linux box. There's, there's yeah. just something about... Well, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it's something that... Because OS X is my main home operating system. Um, and we wonder why. Windows box, it's just like, man, I don't want to use my OS X box. So it's just um, frustrating, I think, that there's, there's these kinds of uh, weird, arbitrary walls that... Uh, Dictated maybe and have a lot of sway on these market share numbers, but it is true that Windows is a, is, is the is the workhorse. Um, well, and, and I don't necessarily as as disagree as as with that, but but part of the reason I'm bringing this up is one thing you and I both agree with with Windows 8 is what Windows 8's doing with the UI. Why that may be great for Grandma and her and her tablet device. Yeah, and this the, guy was commenting uh, 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 on, on the video saying you can get the. Regular desktop, I believe it was there. Uh, we have a comment here. Yeah, it's the, they're, 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 what they're calling desktop mode the regular desktop. They don't, and I, I, I commented back to them on that. I'm like, but the control panel, everything else is done through Metro mode. It's, you know, it, they don't talk to each other, they don't do stuff. But my concern here, and the reason I'm bringing this up, for, for 20 years, Everybody who doesn't like Microsoft has been saying, Microsoft's going to die. This is the decade Microsoft's going to die. Microsoft's going to die. But I'm thinking about it here. Uh, and, and I, I just think it's zero sum game. Well, no, 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 right I know. But, th but that's why I'm bringing this up. Because what, what, hap what the Vista effect did is it really put a chink in the Microsoft armor. People who would never, you know, like you said, Windows at work, so they just assume Windows at home. People who sure. never would have looked at Linux or OS X because of Vista, because it was just such a departure and they were having problems with things, they said, okay, I may have to put up with this shit at work, but I'm not putting up with it at home. And they started looking for something else, anything else. And like I said, they went various places, some back to XP, some to sign. It, it, no matter how big you think the chink is, it's been a chink and it's a noticeable chink. It's argued to be somewhere between 3 and 10%. The question is, because we're dealing with the critical mass thing. This was the same thing with IE for years. You know, it was just IE, it was just IE. And when they fell below 75%, within three years, they'd fallen below 40%. You know, they, just, they went from being the default browser to the, you're using IE. And, and the concern here is, can the Windows platform take that? Can it can it take another three to ten percent chink, which? Oh sure, man. You know, I I've, I've always advocated um, to re to remove the Windows mind share, and and what that is is that I think Windows creates this these oddball expectations on how computing should be. I argued against I argue against an, okay I argued against Windows because I don't want to do Mac versus PC anymore, and that. The fundamental principle of that argument is the very same argument I make against iOS. Anything that I see that principally affects computing, okay, that, that doesn't mean that you can't make shitloads of money like Apple's doing based upon. I mean, isn't that the, isn't that the saying that Steve Jobs had said is that consumers don't know what they want? Well, if that's the case, then why why it, why make something and go backwards in my opinion and say your post your post uh, PC. And, and having software so limited to the fact that we can't, it, it, it has nowhere near um, the software power that we should be, be be attaining and advancing to. I like the simplicity nature of it, but um, don't cut us and, and make it this like what we were arguing in our last show, with such a limiting thing and wanting to do 
concurrency, we should be advancing. Anything that I see... Well, and, and that comes down to a debate a lot of people have had, which is, you can make a UI really simple, but by making it simple, you actually make it less effective and less elegant. And that, exactly. really, that really is exactly what has been done with Windows 8. It is a very simple UI. Metro is a very simple UI. You can do everything with a finger. Click, 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 click. But it's yeah. anything but elegant. Right. And, 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 and my argument has, has and always will be the advancement of computing because I, all of my videos are good. I always say we're here in computing when we should be up here. And that is constantly what I will argue. That's why it really rubs against me the wrong way, the way iOS was to be like, oh, post PC. You know, it would, I wouldn't be as bothered by that whole mantra if, if, it, if it were never so like some this is this is this is a computing platform for those that maybe need less or something. You know, some, some, but 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 bit. How do you market that? That that that's the thing right there. At the end of the day. We're fighting two fundamental things here, and this is why UI is such a why you why truly good UI designers is one of the two the two most in demand jobs in the industry. Uh, uh, actually, just the two most in demand jobs. Period are really talented software developers and really truly talented UI developers who truly get the human factors equation, because uh, those individuals can take the most complex software in the world and not necessarily make a simple UI for it, but make an elegant one that makes this, yeah, that oh dear God technology, seem simple. Yes, yes I agree with that. Because see, I see a lot of many Apple, uh, or I guess, what would it, what would it, Apple bias pundits that love to argue this Apple simplicity, but sometimes what they're arguing is, is, is not simplicity, but and they don't realize that it's it's limitation. Mm -hmm. Com computing is inherently complex, and, and we shouldn't dump something down to a level of a common denominator. We should bring the, the common, do common denominator up. That doesn't mean I'm saying it should be an ugly UI and have all kinds of, of, of weirdness that would become make it, its use and function uh, less attractive. But you have to you have to admit uh, the motive should be bringing the masses to the technology and not technology to the masses, because it, it if you do that then you have to sacrifice the very nature of what computing is doing. It's it's advancing what we want to do, making us more efficient. And if we try to say oh like these damned articles that I argued against before oh we're really just a single task individual. I felt that, that was, remember when I went on that rant, I was so insulted by that. That is, that is like saying, we're going to ignore everybody's SAT scores that they have here, that they've scored above this, and just say that they scored this, so that, so that everybody can just be in this little level playing, playing field. And then there's no advancement, there's, there's nothing. And I hate those excuses. Well, and th this so, is this is what, in my opinion, it is the real problem, honestly, with the Windows 8 Metro UI. What they've done is they've simplified the behind-the-scenes stuff that, like you say, 90% of the end user never messes with. Like they've made the control panel something you can go click, click something you can do with one finger. That is not the type of stuff you're doing in the control panel and the registry and the admin task stuff. This is stuff power users and more sophisticated users. The, the user who wants that to be button, button, button is never going to mess with it anyways. And that's just the, rea that's the reality of the situation. The people who are going to go in and mess with that are a more sophisticated user who want a utilitarian yes, tool. Okay, but let's say, let's say this. The, the problem that, and, and, I, and, and this is a very true thing, once somebody learns something, they become frustrated and they want to do more. We discussed this a little bit in, in previous shows. People always learn once they've mastered something. Of course, they have to get in the door, and that's the big, the biggest hurdle. But once they're there, you watch end users just go, "Can I do this? Can I do this? It'd be great if I could do this." Um, in parallel, and a lot of times you show them, "Oh yeah, that's already built in," and they're like, "Holy cow! I never even knew that existed." It's kind of like this the, uh, this lady who had an Android phone just recently. Uh, she didn't even, she says, I keep clicking this PDF and nothing happens. I said, well, did you check over here? 
Person like who's making the comments was making is like, well, you can still fall back to desktop mode and do that. No, it's not. It's, it, if I have to, because I'm, I'm trying to on, on, the, on the build that I have, and it goes and it makes the damn screen over here, and then it whoop, it's an irritating. Well, no, th that's the thing. By default, it's going to try and launch things in Metro mode. Mm -hmm. uh, the only things that's going to fall back to desktop mode are things that don't have a Metro mode. And then those things you can run in desktop mode, which will be legacy applications. And the problem I see coming there is the same thing I told the person on the thing. They're going to be in a boxing match because the, the, the start screen, you know, and they're right to call it a start screen. It, 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 it isn't a start menu. It's a start screen. Is designed for touch. You know, it's designed for a tablet or a touch screen, which is great. But that UI sucks for get work done, legacy productivity things. So basically, to use your productivity apps, you're going to want a keyboard and mouse. To use your OS, you're going to want a touchscreen slate. So it's like you can either ha you can either use Metro or you can use your applications. You, 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 and you're going to be in a constant fight between the two. Uh, I think what will eventually happen, but this will not happen by launch, is the industry will realize we need to design a new form factor to deal with this user boxing match where it can be both. But that's going to take 18 months to make. That's I don't not. I think you should do it that way. But what, well, I, no, that, that, to sell systems, that's what the industry is going to have to do. Well, <laughs> it, it's, it's, so, it, it, it's so frustrating when in Windows, in, in just fractions of a second, I can navigate from one to the next. I mean, it's just rapid. In Metro UI, it's, it's, it's like iOS. It's slow as hell. It's, it reminds me of pushing that stupid little home button to go to another damn thing, and then you find it, and you go, and you... It's, it's, the, mo it's the most irritating. No, it, it's literally going back to the days of Windows 1.0 before you could layer stuff, is what I it is. I can't stand it. And, and I think anybody who wants to make excuses for it, I don't think you're doing much on a computer. Um, no, 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 no. And I, I'm at the comment. No. For people who their primary, but, uh, th for the average user. But, but then, then you have to ask yourself, why do you want to pay so much for a device? It's like, that's the, that's, that was the main conundrum for the iPad. Why do I want to pay 600 bucks just to be limited by this? See, I mean, it's like, to me, the iPad and iOS don't even use touch appropriately. To, for instance, to navigate, I have to push the home button. Versus my, you know, my favorite UIs uh, on mobile, which is a simple. It works like Windows, right? I, I, I'll, I'll make a parallel. If I swipe up on WebOS, I get all my cards, just like the the taskbar. All of them are immediately at a glance that I can actually hit extremely quickly and, and, and go to without frustration of my whole screen real estate going shit by one thing and then just this irritating type of navigation to go to the next. And I don't want Windows 8 to behave that way. It, it, it's just um, <laughs> I know. Hey, look, let's put it this way. It, I'm not going to be missing much. You're talking to a person who stayed on Windows NT4 Service Pack 6 Well, no, I, 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 I know that, but getting back to the getting no. back to what we were getting at. Okay, you're saying you think Microsoft can take the hit that Windows 8 is going to cause oh, to their market share. They're going to take the hit. I think that their market share, I want their market share to, to, to get smaller. That's, I've been advocating that. I don't like the Windows mentality. That oh, 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 okay. But that, but that was the question. That was the question we were getting at here. It's obvious Windows 8 is going to cause Microsoft to take a hit. 
Do you think it's a hit that's going to be large, uh -huh. large enough that it's finally going to put that chink in the Windows mentality where Windows will, we will not be assumed we're Windows. It will be assumed we're a computer, not that we're Windows. Or do you think it's going to be a small enough chink that it's still going to be a Windows world? It's going to be a Windows world for a while, predominantly because Windows is business, and business bleeds into the home, and that causes people to have, you know, two products and things like that. It's going to take a while. People, I just maybe the adoption of Windows 8 will not be as widespread uh, in business, and that means that Microsoft's going to be having that Windows 7 you know, v being the Windows XP syndrome of the future. So uh, okay, now that brings up another thing because they're doing something with Windows 8. Okay. That is gonna that's gonna create an additional line in the sand. And you're a developer. You could you could handle you could answer this question better than I can. From what I understand, what they're doing with Windows 8 is they're basically drawing a line in the sand for developers, and they're trying to say going forward for the Windows platform, you want to be writing things in Metro. You want to be writing them the Metro way. You so they wind up in the Windows uh, App Store and so on and so forth, which basically means new versions of software, even if it's not Microsoft software, new third-party software, everything from Corel, going, things that have gone all the way back to the early versions of Windows, and so on. For Windows, they're going to have to write a Metro. That's going to create the situation of version whatever of the software, the new version, why it will run on Windows Vista 7, 8. The UI is going to be the Metro UI. That'll be the same the same problem that happened from XP to, to, to Vista is that many companies you're just companies don't move if something is not broken essentially, and they, it doesn't matter. I, yes, they're they're the .NET has the ability to communicate with Metro, and you have those those extra functions that you can compile in, and also the ability to compile to ARM or x86. Now the 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 deal of it is that. That's no different from what already has happened in Windows. Because there's been massive breaks in the way software even runs from XP to Vista. So the software is going to remain. If, if the companies don't change, uh, like if a, if a developer company does not change your software and they've got a shitload of clients, bar, or barring anybody else beating that company at development and saying, we're going to, you know, we'll be a competitor and then write something from Metro. That the companies that are their clients are not moving, and they'll because that's their business. I, I can't tell you how many businesses stick to something that is their that is they can't they cannot cut ties. There's too much to lose. Now consumers, that's a whole other ballgame. See, that's where OS 10 is powerful. So OS 10 is a now, but OS 10 didn't, is not doing the drastic change that Windows is. OS 10 is OS 10. The App Store is the App Store. It doesn't matter. OS 10 doesn't have uh, an identity problem of saying we're Windows or Metro style. They just you know, made everything into an app store. Now Windows is changing identity to this to this to this metro thing, and that can be very consumer oriented. But that it may it may fall very flat on its face that if people perceive Windows as the workhorse, that that is the company OS that sits in the corner that I have to use in, to log into my work. Windows 8 doesn't really have much of a shot. Um, well, and, and, that, and that, that's why I'm bringing this up. You know, indirectly, this could be the straw that finally breaks the camel's back. Because if everybody winds up looking at Windows like the Windows 8, the other OS, you know, that that really hurts Microsoft's mind share and market share. It, 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 I think Microsoft will begin to build a new demographic. It won't be as big, though, very tight with this Metro thing where their largest demographic is business. Now, it, it can, over time, long-term, prove to be successful. I won't say it. But, but without, them developing the, without them developing the two products, a Windows Business and a Windows Metro, that, I mean, they, well, it, they, they, they've made it clear, no, this is the one Windows to rule them all. No, we were discussing that article. I don't think that that's, that's totally, the .NET is still... Predominant and, and Metro is, is, is you know the side package that you can that it can communicate with it to write for. But um, Microsoft's attitude has always been to keep its 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 client base happy with legacy, and and, and even when they went to Windows Seven and Vista, they 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 did that. They made major changes in security, which was something that was heavily overlooked in our architecture coming onto Vista. But I, I 
I, I, I really see that enough people will just say this is just this is not going to happen, um, and I don't think that they're they're going to use uh, Metro to aim at business. I think I really do believe that they will um, have an alternative OS for that for that business side. And then so, to so, so you think so you side. think come twenty. 13, 2014, there's going to be a Windows 8.5 for business? Maybe. Uh, maybe it wouldn't be called Windows 8. Who knows? Well, I, I, I'm just saying that for a second, because we're obviously going to build it on the same code base. They're just going to change yeah. the UI for um, business. I, I, who knows? I, I, but I, I know what they're doing. They're wanting to target consumers because they, they want to um, have... Right now, the consumer mentality is what's making money and that's predominantly brought about by Apple it, 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 IT departments are bitching about people wanting to put their iPhones and, and all this other crap we were discussing you know with the whole Halliburton issue last week um, that, that's winning for now but mark my words the first breach that occurs everybody goes like the Blackberry and you know it, 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 IT loses this battle but they're not going to lose the war because IT is the backbone of computing of business and it, you know that is that is the spine. I part. don't know what IT department you were looking in. The execs always just told us make it work, and we're like, you're an idiot, but you pay the bills. All right. No, no, no. <laughs> of course they want to make it work, but when that happens, what, what is the IT department? I mean, come on. I've been with AIG, Continental Air, <laughs> Xerox. I've seen. I've seen. Yeah, there's always. Can we do this? Yes, we try to do it. it creates too many headaches, and then. There's, there's a run on budget, and they just go, ah, oh, forget it. And they hey, come you know what? Go. I don't mind those people because they keep me fed. I, I, I come in, I consult, I go, oh, we can get there from here. This is how much it's going to be. <laughs> so it's back and forth. And the execs, yeah, they can say, we want it, and they may get it, and then there's a problem, and then they have to make policy to prevent the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it always, it usually goes in that order. And right now, the consumer mentality is the flipping idea, and that's what Microsoft wants to say. Hey, we're beyond the work UI for you. We we we're also an OS 10 for you. Fun stuff and do do photos and things. Although I think OS 10 is a workhorse myself, but the the majority of perception of OS 10 users that I know are totally in the you know the the, the bubblegum fuss side of things, and uh, uh, you know they don't even. If I even begin to talk to them about Acrobat, well, uh, uh, okay. To wrap this up, because we've gone on for almost forty minutes here. Um, the uh, so it's, deal with Microsoft. Uh, no, no, I know. Uh, it, it's uh, it sounds like you're thinking like me. They're going to lose market share. Yeah, I, but, I don't want them to be the dominant. But no, no, no. But that's not the question being asked. Uh, the, yeah. uh, okay, the question isn't do you want Microsoft to be the predominant force. That's not the question being asked. The question being asked is: Is the market share they're going to lose enough to uh, to basically underroad the you know the default will? Because here's what's going to happen: If it gets to the point that biz, uh, th there's a number of people I know. I happen to be one of them who haven't bought a laptop and going on four years now because we want a high resolution laptop, and almost everything on the market is these little 768 screens. We take one look at it and we go, that doesn't fit my needs for the type of work I do. I'm not buying it. Eventually, what the line's going to come here, yes, Microsoft is going after average end user here, but business has the needs business has. And if they aren't met, they aren't interested in buying. Eventually, the rub's going to come. Microsoft either makes a current version of Windows that meets the need of business, or business is going to go look at other platforms that meet the needs of business. If it Analytics gets, may even encroach even more because that's how you exactly know, that, that's the it thing. And if it gets to that point, OEMs have to make the decision, do we continue to blindly support Microsoft or do we make products our customers want to buy? And then that's the little thing. It's like how close, what share do we have to fall below that the, that the as to use your favorite word, uh, God, I can't remember it right now, risk, benefit, whatever, uh, opportunity cost, that the opportunity cost <laughs> reaches <laughs> the point 
that they're yeah. like, oh crap, we need to make a serious effort at supporting Linux and BSD. And it, 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 honestly, I think they'd probably go BSD before they went Linux. They try and make a you know because BSD license allows them to still go proprietary and everything. But it, it, you know, it, it, basically, if we cross that line where OEMs are really making a good, honest push for selling Unix or Linux systems. It, it, that's the same snowball effect we had in the browsers. It's like, oh, well, Microsoft's in trouble now because with it, they don't have anything to artificially prop them up anymore. They have to actually outcompete. I, I mean, let's face... I, I want to agree with They're going to lose market share. I think it's inevitable. Uh, OS X is gaining. Linux is certainly gaining. I, I don't like these numbers. That are, I think Linux is, is much more popular than these statistics are letting on. Uh, gosh, I see Linux everywhere I go now. So uh, I, I know. It, well, it, it, honestly, I've always given these metrics like a fifteen percent error. I mean, some of these metrics count OS X as little as nine percent. If I had to honestly guess, I'd guess OS X has at least ten to twelve percent market share right yeah, now. It, 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 OS X is yeah, yeah. because there's, yeah, there's very few homes now that that I that I go into or hear people uh, talking about. Or their iMac or whatever. Yeah, now I, I, I wouldn't put Linux at 10%, but I would put it at 5 to 8%. Because there, there's, I mean, it's, there's a lot of people who have, you know, it, it, honestly, for Linux, but I think Linux is kind of bottlenecked, though, at its growth potential. For Linux to really grow more, it has to start being supported more by OEMs. You have to be able to go to Best Buy and buy a Linux system that's okay. comparable to the Windows one. Not buy the Windows one, then make it a Linux box. That's just, and we're not there yet. Well, 